The Canon EOS R1 might not be getting a global shutter after all, but we might see a 45 megapixel sensor like the one found in the EOS R5. So does this mean we'll get 8K video in the EOS R1? Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Simon. Thanks for tuning in to The Ordinary Filmmaker. Subscribe to get notification of new videos like this one so you don't miss any news, rumors, gear reviews, or tutorials. And to make things just a little bit more exciting, I'm giving away a brand new Canon EOS R5 full frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. Details are in the description down below, or you can watch this video here. Please look at the terms and conditions as there are some age and location restrictions. And now for the news. Craig says that the EOS R1 might not be coming with a global shutter, stating the latter may be hard to do and perhaps Canon can do something like Sony did to get rid of the rolling shutter by using an electronic shutter. Interesting. That's one of the things we were sure to get in the EOS R1, right? Now the EOS R1 at this point is turning out to be a bit more mystery than fact. At least we're getting quad pixel autofocus, right? Well, not exactly. He said that there have been mentions of a new quad pixel autofocus system which we have seen in patents for the last year. That doesn't look all that 100%, does it? And I think what we're seeing here is two of the expectations we're seeing in the EOS R1 haven't been confirmed and it's a little bit up in the air right now. But he didn't do anything to say we're not getting it either. Now, Craig did go on to say one thing that I thought was rather interesting, that we'll see, or that we won't see, a 20 megapixel sensor, the same one that's found in the 1DX Mark III. I think it's safe to say that pro-level cameras going forward will be 8K capable. So I would suspect we're going to see at least a 45 megapixel image sensor in the EOS R1. This means that the video specs in the EOS R1 will appear similar to that found in the recently announced Sony Alpha 1. But we're unlikely to have anything like 8.6K oversampled 8K with a 45 megapixel sensor. Now, here's something I want to bring up. I talked about this last year, and I said based on the current throughput in the 1DX Mark III, not that the EOS R1 might be a little faster, but based on that throughput, if we increased, or it, actually let's go back to the baseline, if we kept that 20 megapixel sensor, based on the throughput and the removal of a physical shutter, we could actually get around 48, 49 frames per second. Well, if we now take that same throughput and we plug in 45 megapixels, then we're probably looking at right around 20 frames per second, mechanical. And that would probably do quite okay. The current 1DX Mark III has 16 frames per second mechanical and 20 frames per second electronic. So 45 megapixel image sensor? Yeah, that's possible. I think this is still first and foremost a camera for fast action sports photographers. And I think getting to around 20 frames per second mechanical is very important. Now, the one thing about the EOS R1, while I think it'll be limited to 8K, it'll have 8K RAW just like the R5. But I wonder if we're going to get 4K RAW. How will the EOS R1 be better in video than the R5? If we look at the 5 Series camera, the last one, we had 4K 30, but the 1DX Mark III, it had 4K 60. They both had motion JPEG, and we're going to leave that one alone, that, how terrible that was. So I do expect, this time around, the 1 Series mirrorless camera to be better than the 5 Series mirrorless camera in video. And 4K RAW would definitely be one of those advantages, but I'm not sure what else we'll get. We already have 4K 120. Now, the one thing we could see here is the elimination of that overheating issue found in the EOS R5. It's going to be a bigger body. They could definitely implement a better architecture to basically provide unlimited 8K recording. It's definitely possible. They could provide unlimited 4K 60 or 4K 120. And I know this because if we look at a previous video where a gentleman fabricated a piece of copper plate, put it underneath one of the, one of the um, um, what's the circuit boards, and secured it to the magnesium case, he was able to record unlimited 8K video inside in studio condition, so around 70 degrees. Now keep in mind, he only did it for about three or four hours and he figured or concluded at that point that if he can go this long, then pretty much it's unlimited. And that's what others have done. Once they reach that three or four hour mark, they've deemed it to be pretty much unlimited. Now, another thing, will the EOS R1 be able to record to both cards simultaneously with video? Yes, we get it in 8K proxy mode, and of course photos get it, but the video side, not so much. Hopefully the EOS R1 does that differently. And the other question is, how will the EOS R1 be different than the recently re announced yesterday Sony Alpha A1 that I keep nicknaming Steak Sauce? A1 Steak Sauce, right? If you're from the US, you'll get this. If you're not from the US, 
Um, think Houses of Parliament or HB sauce. Okay, another question. Will the Canon R1 take the crown back from the Sony A1 as the best fast action sports shooter? Well, maybe, but we're gonna have to wait till the second half of 2021 to find out. Craig doesn't think we're gonna get it anytime sooner, and he believes that the Olympics aren't gonna go ahead, and I think this is a big thing too. If the Olympics do go ahead, Canon is going, to want to, is going to want to have their camera out before the Olympics. If the Olympics get canceled outright, then, well, there's no big rush to get it out there. We'll know pretty soon, I'd expect, and I'd expect us to start getting some leaked specifications on this camera soon. Everything we've got right now is kind of up in the air. It's not really confirmed. It's, it's no better than Sony rumors, right? Not a lot of confirmation here. So that's the one real outcome of this video. The previous specifications we thought to be in the camera that we were going to be getting a global shutter and quad pixel autofocus look like they may not be certain but it looks like 8k is going to be more common uh, in professional level cameras so the nikon z9 coming out might also have 8k as well so uh, and part of the reason driving this is we're seeing a lot more television and broadcast moving to 8k for special events like sports hockey and the olympics which might not happen this year Anyhow, that's pretty well all I wanted to say. I did want to talk briefly to you about the Sony Alpha A1 in behind the scenes. So in this episode of Behind the Scenes, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, some of the feedback I got yesterday in my video about the Sony Alpha A1. And by and large, it was very good. Now, I was pretty excited in the video. I, I really did enjoy the presentation. I thought Sony presented a very enticing camera. It looked interesting. I really wanted it. Uh, but again, at $6,500 US or about 10,000 Canadian, there's no way I can afford that. And that means I'd also have to purchase glass as well. And yeah, I, I would be broke, busted. I couldn't do it. I'm kind of stuck in the Canon platform right now, and I still want to get the Sony a7S III. So just have to wait and see but it does look like a great camera now one thing i kept saying over and over and i agree we do have to wait to see what the actual real world results are uh, one person said to me today that um through gerald undone a sony representative said we, he was able to record an hour without it overheating and i think it was 8k or it was the 4k 60 i can't remember which mode it was but those ones there's a 30 minute limit so you'd have to stop and start the recording again that's great, but that's still not what I consider an independent source. So we need to see some specifications. Sorry, we got the specifications. We need to see some actual results, see how good this camera is. Remember the R5 when we, when Canon was getting ready to release it, we're getting really excited. And then right on the day of the presentation, all of a sudden Canon sent out this overheat chart. And it was a big chart talking about how the camera overheats in various modes. On the R6, 4K 30, although it was 5.1K oversampled 4K. But the EOS R5 in the 4K HQ mode, which is the 8K oversampled 4K, 4K60, 4K 120. And it kind of took a lot of wind out of the sails. Canon had been pushing this wonderful camera. And ever since February this year, last year, they kept hounding how it's, look, it, look at this video. Look, it does 8K. It does 4K 120. It has IBIS. And it does it in all video modes. So you get to do IBIS. You get autofocus. And all video modes and image stabilization and people are going like nah from canon and canon said yes sure enough so right up until the announcement everybody was focused on the video which is odd because even canon says this is primarily a professional stills camera with very good video features so i'm really curious to see what we're going to see in the r1 because i think the sony a1 it's the video features are very very good on paper they look amazing this looks like to be a really solid camera and true, it's about $2,600 more than the R5. And the R5 doesn't look so expensive anymore, does it? And what do you get for that? Well, it looks like the one thing you get with that camera is, well, it's not as susceptible to overheating, but it doesn't look like it's any better than the A7S III. You get better video modes. Your 8K is 8.6K oversampled, but if you don't have any plans of shooting 8K, that's really not there. And part of the deconstruction over the next couple of days is kind of looking at these specifications and asking yourself, what capabilities do you need out of a pro level camera? Is this a camera you need? Or is your A7S III or R5 more than good enough for where you are today? And for me, I said, yeah, the R5 is good enough for me today. The things I would like fixed is give me C-Log3, give me spot metering on the R5 in video mode. It's in there in photo mode, but video mode, it's not there, which 
If you've been watching my channel long enough, you know I'm really frustrated by that. But that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win two Angelbird 128GB AV Pro MK2 B90 SD cards along with a dual SD card reader. Or you could also win the Ulanzi LED light package with accent lights, underwater lights, and various other flat panel lights. I'll be awarding these two prize bundles to two lucky viewers once this channel reaches 30,000 subscribers. And then of course I'll be offering up a new prize every 10,000 or so until this channel reaches 100,000 subscribers, at which point I'll be awarding a brand new Canon EOS R5 full-frame mirrorless camera. And on that bombshell, thanks so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon.